everyone. 你们好 Welcome back to another episode of Growing Up with Chinese. 成长汉语 First off, I'd like to thank all of you who wrote in after watching our first show. It really is great to hear from you, and very helpful to all of us working on the show. So keep your comments and questions coming our way. After today's show, I'll be able to thank all of you in Chinese because our topic for today is that's right, thank yous. Now, last time we met Xiaoming and saw how he greeted different people using the phrases "ni hao" (hello), "ni men hao" (hello everyone), "ye ye" (早上好 ，good morning grandfather), and "ni hao" (hello) using the formal "you". Today we're going to meet Mike as he makes his way to Xiaoming's apartment, accompanied by his teacher. And yes, he has a lot of thank yous to be handing out today. Let's take a look. Thank you. 没事儿，不用谢。谢谢，不客气。你们好。您好。您好。谢谢您。嗨，没事儿，不客气。All right, let's break down what we heard. The first phrase is pretty simple. 谢谢 It means thanks. Now, I know some people have a hard time with the pronunciation of 谢谢 Uh, you can think of it kind of like the word she and e. She, she, not too hard, right? She, she. Now, if you add a ni or nin to the end of she, she, it becomes thank you, informal, or thank you, formal. She, she, ni, that would be informal. She, she, nin, is formal. She, she. 没事儿，不用谢。不用谢 This means you're welcome. 不 is the negative or no. 用 is a verb we will cover many many times, and in this context, it means need. So put together, 不用 means no need. So 不用谢 literally is no need to thank or no thanks necessary or you're welcome. 谢谢。没事儿，不用谢。谢谢。不客气。You're welcome. 不 again is no or a negative. 客气 means polite. So 不客气 literally means no polite. Now to be polite in China is something that you do with strangers. You make sure to be polite with strangers. But when it comes to people who are close to you, whether they're family or friends, being polite is something to kind of avoid. After all, you don't want to make the people close to you feel like you're treating them like strangers. So, as a result of this cultural tendency to not be polite, is a phrase to use as "you're welcome." 不客气。谢谢您。嗨，没事儿，不客气。So that's not too hard to follow, right? Let's watch the action once more. 谢谢，没事儿，不用谢。
，谢谢，谢谢，不客气。你们好，您好，您好，谢谢您。嗨，没事儿，不客气。Everyone, let's take a look at today's vocabulary. Before we go into today's specific vocabulary words, let's take a minute to go over pinyin or how we write Chinese using the Roman alphabet as opposed to using characters. Now, a Chinese character or Chinese syllable word can be divided into two parts: the initial and the final. For example, let's take a look. Ming. 的 word Ming is composed of the initial M and the final Yin. Now there are only 23 initial sounds in Chinese, and many of them are pronounced quite similarly to how we pronounce them in English. For example, B as in bottle, P as in part, D as in dog, T as in time, G as in go. But it's always hard, never soft, and K as in key. Now there are more similar sounds, but instead of listing all of them for you, let's go over some of the initial sounds that aren't so similar. For example, Z as in zang or zeng. Its pronunciation is quite similar to the D S sound in English, like cards. But you need to move the tip of your tongue closer to the back of your teeth. Zang. Zeng, okay. C as in tang or tang. It's similar to the T S in its tang. Now here's an interesting one. Q as in chiu or chong. It's similar to the C H sound in English, kind of like a chu, chong. Z H as in zhang or zhou. Think of the J sound in judge, and you've got this one. Zhang. Now X, as in xing or xie. Now this sound is somewhere in the middle of S H and S, and this one's a bit tricky because the initial S H is pronounced like sh is in English. X is somewhere in the middle. So let's take shang and xia as an example. Here are the two words: shang and xia. Shang, xia, shang, xia. Can you hear the difference? It's not major, I know, but it is there, and it'll come with practice. We also have R as in rong or ro. It's quite similar to the R sound in run, but the R is a little softer. So try moving your tongue more to the back of your mouth. Rong, ro. Okay. Now for a complete list of all the initials in Pinyin, you can find them online on our website. They will be coming up as we move along in our shows, though. So you will all have plenty of time to practice. For now. Let's go into our vocabulary words of the day. Bu, no, or used with other characters to make something negative. Bu, xie xie, thank you. Xie xie, yong, to use. Yong, kechi, polite. Kechi. Can any of you remember some of the first words your parents or family members taught you when you were small? 
I'm sure it's different for everyone, but if I had to guess, thank you is probably among your list of words. In many cultures, thank you is probably a phrase that you say the most every day. If someone holds a door for you, you say thank you. If you order something to eat at a restaurant, you say thank you to your server. If your parents do something for you, you say thank you. I can remember when I was small, my mom said to me, after someone gave me something, what do you say? And I said, thank you. In China, rules for saying thank you are kind of opposite. In a nutshell, the logic behind saying thank you in China is that the closer you are to someone, or the more you know that person, the less you say thank you. Interesting, huh? The way Chinese people explain this is that if your mom does something for you, for example, you don't need to say thank you. She knows you're grateful. If you say thank you, you're distancing yourself from her. And the same goes with friends. You don't really thank friends here. If I say thank you to my best Chinese girlfriend, she gets all grumpy with me. She'll respond by saying, well, we're friends, aren't we? We do things for each other. You don't need to thank me. If you thank me, it makes me feel like we're not friends. Yes, literally, that's what she says. All right, that wraps up our cultural spotlight section for this show. And now, let's move into some language points. We have a tone alert for 不. When used on its own, 不 is fourth tone, 不. When 不 is used before another fourth tone, it becomes second tone, 不 xie or 不 yong xie. Can you hear how it changed? Now, this specific rule doesn't apply to two fourth tones all across the board. Remember how we discussed two third tones turn into second and third, like ni hao, right? That's an all across the board rule. In this case, bu is special. It's an exception in the world of fourth tones. Bu xie, bu ke qi, bu yong xie. Don't worry. We'll go over it again in an episodes to come. Let's look at some examples first. 谢谢你,兰兰。爷爷,不用谢。谢谢你,兰兰。Mike,不用谢。客气. Now, there's no definite rule for when a fourth tone turns neutral. And if you were to say 谢谢 or 客气, as two definite fourth tones, people would still have no problem understanding what you're saying. It's more of a feeling kind of rule, which I know when you're learning a new language can be very frustrating. It's always nice to have clear rules for when things change, but don't worry. We'll try to go over this kind of change as much as we possibly can, and soon you'll all have an instinctive feeling for when a neutral tone is needed. Let's look at some examples. 小明,谢谢你。不客气。谢谢你,兰兰。老师,不客气. <laughs> the taxi driver said, 没事, when Mike's teacher thanked him for helping with Mike's bag. 没事 means, that's nothing, that's all right. Just like we could say in English, that's okay, you're welcome or it's nothing, you don't need to thank me. You can say 没事,不用谢 or 没事,不客气 in Chinese. 你的钱包谢谢你没事儿谢谢你没事儿 Okay, that brings us to the end of today's show. I hope you all had fun. Now don't forget to visit our website for reviewing or simply for fun, and please keep your feedback coming in. See you all next time. 加油,再见!